okay. Art okay. chat. Art chat number two, uh, fall 2022, with Miss Julie Owens visiting us from Nebraska. Um, and uh, uh, Julie, this all is right. All well, right. thank you guys for having me here. I'm excited to talk to you. Um, I was going to start by just giving you a little info on my background and um, I don't, have you had a chance to look at my work at all? So you kind of know, yes, know what I do. Okay. Um, and if you have questions, please interrupt me. I would much rather ask questions than just give a monologue. Um, so anyway, I grew up sewing, making, I've been sewing since I was probably seven years old. So it's just always been something I've done. And um, I went to college for textiles and clothing design. I thought I wanted to be a fashion designer. And by the time I got out of school for that, I was, I was not ready to move to New York and try to become a fashion designer. It seemed way too overwhelming. So I worked for a while and um, then thought, I, I, I just worked like a random job and I was missing um, doing something creative. So I went back to school and got an art degree with a graphic design emphasis. I thought I'll be a graphic designer. I can live anywhere. So I did that. And by the time I got done, I realized that textile design was really where I wanted to be. So I was older. I was in my like mid to late twenties and I had friends that had moved to New York. So I decided to just go for it. So I had actually applied for a job at Martha Stewart before I moved out there and I wasn't qualified for it, but the HR girl called me and said, you know, you're not qualified for this job, but we love your work. So if you actually do move out here, give us a call. And my favorite part of that story is that she said, call me and say that you're the girl from Nebraska, which tells you how many people they have from Nebraska that apply. So I moved to New York. I like packed two suitcases, bought a one-way plane ticket and went and crashed on my friend's couch for the first like week or two that I was there. And I called the HR person up and said, hi, this is the girl from New York. I'm here. <laughs> and she, I got in for an interview um, and I got a job in like, it's called the soft home department at Martha Stewart. So we did like all um, like soft textile goods for the home. So bedding, towels, placemats, kitchen towels, all that kind of stuff. And I specialized in bedding. So I was doing like um, comforter sets, sheet sets, that kind of thing. I dug out my portfolio just to show you kind of like what, what our designs look like. So like this, for example, would be like a top of bed design and then the, either the reverse or a sheet set to go with it. So we cranked out lots of stuff like this. I'll just show you a couple, but. Um, so Julie, you would uh, create these designs and then, and then that would be sent to the, the I don't know, the, the manufacturer of the, of the. Exactly. Yeah. So we would, we would create the designs like either from scratch or from vintage textiles or purchased artwork and we would have to fit them into like a specific repeat size we would make the colors reflect the brand and then they would be shipped off mostly to china some of the embroidered things went to india and they would come back with samples and then we would have to give color comments quality comments and there would be you know a handful of back and forth until they nailed it and then they would go into production. So, and then I started out mostly doing, like I said, like comforters and sheets. By the time I left, I was also the quilt designer, um, which was interesting because I've always had kind of an interest in making quilts. Um, so I did, I had, I dug these out too. This was fun to go through my old work. So like, this is supposed to be like a queen sized bed scaled down. Um, so you can see kind of the, the like modern aesthetic that we were doing. Let's see, there's a, this one's fun. Yeah. So, so that was a lot of fun to do. And then um, 
while I was doing this. So it was all very computerized and not a lot of hands-on. Like there was some hands-on design work. I'm also a knitter. So I would actually knit swatches that we would send to the factories like to do throws and that kind of thing, which was really cool. Um, but I wasn't doing a lot of like hands-on making. So in my free time, I started sewing quilts because like, why not? It was fun and it was, it was something that I could, you know, be doing something creative again. Um, so I was making more like quilts, functional quilts at that point. I wasn't as interested in the art side of things. Um, and I have a couple, so like this is, this is like an early quilt. You can see it's, it's a super traditional pattern, but doing them in the solid colors, I love that more modern look that they take on. Um, so I work with a lot of solids. Here's one that's with prints, but it still is that um, more modern look. Um, and I should show you too, when I was in college, I was already experiment, like when I was getting my art degree, I was already experimenting a little with quilts. Here's one I did um, with a piece background and then screen printed. And you can kind of see similarities in this in my current style with piecing together the solids or the, you know, the different to make a solid color. Wait, wait, you said, and then screen printed. What? Yeah, the, the tree branch is screen printed on here. It's not quilted on the corn sides of it? It's just well, I so then I, so the quilting part is, it's stitched around the sides of it. So that's why it looks kind of dimensional. Ah. But it's printed on, ah. and I should, I should back up just to make sure everybody knows what qualifies a quilt as a quilt. So it has to have three layers. It has a front, which is the pieced part. So this is just the sample. And then it has a backing fabric and then it has this middle layer of batting. So you have to have all three layers for it to be a quilt. So first you piece together the front and I have some here. Um, so you can see what they look like before they're quilted. So like, here's a recent one I did and you can see how the pieces are all put together. This is the backside. Uh -huh. And then I'll use this to make like a sandwich and then stitch through all the layers to make it into an actual quilt. Are, 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 are quilts you, traditionally, the front and the back are different? Like one is designed and one is not? Yeah, usually the front is like where, where all of the work goes into the design. Yeah. And then the back is either a solid piece of fabric or like pieced large pieces of fabric. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, so anyway, so I started doing that. And then um, after a few years, I ended up marrying somebody from Nebraska. So I moved back home and was still doing some sewing. They were still like less in the art arena and more just kind of modern quilts. Um, I actually worked part-time at a quilt, large quilt museum that we have in Lincoln during that time as their photographer. Um, and then I got busy with kids and life and wasn't really doing much in the creative realm until really just over this past summer, I got serious about it again. And I wanted to approach it from an art perspective. Like I wanted to make art and I wanted it to be quilts. So that's when I started doing um, the kind of work that you guys see on my Instagram. So that's kind of how I got to the point I'm at now. Yeah, and then it, I just saw some of the patterns and thought they were fantastic and then reached out and, and, and here we are. This is here we are, yes. So, so do, do any of you have any questions or? Um, Anything? I guess I could I could talk a little more about my my current process. So I have like two main ways that I work. I either work super planned out, where I do the design in Illustrator, I print it out, and then treat it as kind of a map of what I want the quilt to look like. So um, I don't know if you remember this quilt from my Instagram. Here is the original design. And this one I actually did like a decade ago. 
and just never got it made. And so it was really fun to finally bring it to life. Um, but here's another one. This one has not been made yet. I like to take for this type of quilt, I like to take really traditional patterns and then mess with them. So um, both this one and the yellow quilt are derived from a pattern called the Sawtooth Star, which is a very traditional quilt pattern. But then I like to make that, them. That blue one, the blue one, it's so nice because it brings in like the, the it's, I'm going to call it negative space, but the white. Right. Especially, yeah, you that, that plays a dominant role in that one, which is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like yeah. that kind of deconstructed. Yeah. Um, where the negative space starts to play with your eye a little bit. That would be a great floor. Yeah, it would be an interesting floor, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I actually, I. I pin lots of inspiration images on Pinterest and a lot of the things that I pin are actually rugs. Um, uh, like yeah. I, I like the really graphic designs. Yeah. Um, so which is probably connected to my background in graphic design. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then oh. obviously color is a really big part of my work. I usually kind of start at color um, and then that that's sort of where I go from there. Like I, I get really obsessed with the color and then I wanna see what I can do with it and um, what the presence of other colors does to it in terms of changing it. So. The, the what, what, Take us through the uh, a traditional process. Now, I mean, through a typical Julie process. Is it okay. sit down at the computer and figure it out graphically? Then you find the fabric. Do you find the fabric first? Sometimes, like what? what is it all yes. new fabric? Yeah. So, um, so sometimes I sit down at the computer and design it out, and then go from there. Probably more often than not, I just start kind of playing with sewing stuff together. I have a wall here in my studio. I'll actually turn my, you can see my messy room. I have this wall here where I've put up panels that are covered in quilt battings. So fabric sticks to them. So I'll like put up pieces of fabric and then see kind of how they relate to each other, shapes, how they relate to each other. And then that'll inspire a quilt idea. Um, I have, you know, it's, it's so different than like with painting, you can mix whatever color you want. But with this, I have to find my palette, you know, within fabric. So I have a couple totes of salt. I use mostly solids. So I have a couple totes and I just order half yard cuts of, um, the colors that appeal to me. You can get these. I'll show you my color color book here. This is my, my favorite line of fabric. So I have this massive um, folder here and these are all different colors of fabric that they produce. So it's really fun to order <laughs> new fabrics. I usually get like half yard cuts and then it's interesting to see um, you know, which colors I'm drawn to, and then I'll end up having to order more of those. I'm kind of narrowing in more and more on my colors. Um, but yeah, a lot of times it's just a matter of, I'm obsessed with these colors. I'm going to just like start sewing them together, cutting them up again, see where it goes. Um, my, my most important tool is this ruler. I'm obsessed with these clear grid rulers because they make it really easy to cut out fabrics. And then I use a rotary cutter a mm. lot. So here's your rotary color cutter commercial for the presentation. <laughs> and you've got uh, like, I mean, it's just like a typical table in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, I, I love the tables in a fabric house that have the groove in it with the. Oh, right. So um, I don't actually cut fabric that way. I don't, okay, I, don't that other, that I use the rotary cutter. I don't cutter, generally yeah. use scissors. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my table here is, it's actually two hollow core doors that are sitting on um, sawhorses. 
uh -huh. and they're at a, they're high so that I can stand at the table yeah. and work comfortably. Yeah. Uh, so what is upon the table? Is it like, that, like <laughs> a plastic cutting mat or something? Yeah, it's um. Okay. I'll, let me tip this down. You can see yeah. it's this yeah. like self healing cutting mat. Yeah. Um, that I've been hauling around with me since college. And then I've got my sewing machines back here. I've got my regular sewing machine and a serger that I use like for sewing clothing and that kind of thing. Uh, and I mean, call it, call it, uh, 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 when you, gosh, dog it. <laughs> um, the wall to your right, yeah, like my design wall. Yeah, that's like straight out of the, I mean, I could have, that's a cover of Living Magazine. Right? Oh. <laughs> power of suggestion. Call it the power of suggestion. There you go. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. How the, how'd you kind of get into like just making quilts as opposed to like, I guess, other art forms? Um, you know, I guess I, I came into creativity through sewing. I grew up with a mom that sewed and my grandma, my grandma's sister. I was just around it all the time. So it's just like what feels most comfortable to me. And I, I still, I wanted to make like decorative art or you know, something that you could hang on your wall, but I am not an oil painter and I'm not, I'm not great at drawing. I have like good, um, like spatial skills, but I'm not a great drawer. So this is just what feels, it, it's like what comes easily to me, what feels good. What's a good first sewing machine to get? Oh gosh, <laughs> I am not a sewing machine expert. I know that you can get, um, affordable sewing machines. Like you could probably go to Joann's and spend a few hundred dollars um, and get a starting machine. I've used FAF machines for years and love them. It's P-F-A-F-F -F, and they're good German machines. Um, that's kind of my, my favorite brand just because it's what I've always used. Um, but, but yeah, I think you know, if you're just starting out and want to try, you could also get a used machine, like a nicer used machine would probably be a good way to go. Um, but. How long does it usually take you to make a full quilt? Um, it, so it depends on the size and I keep thinking, oh, I need to keep track of this so that when I'm pricing my work to sell, I have a better idea, but um, let, me, let me grab one of these off the wall. Um, so like I, I've made three, three of these quilts in the last month or so. And I would say this is probably like a 16 hour quilt. Um, you know, maybe half of that time goes into piecing the front and then the quilting. And then, you know, once it's, once it's quilted, you still have this crud on the edge. So then that gets trimmed off and then you can either finish it with a facing. I don't know if you can see, um, there's like this strip that's sewn on the back to hide the edges, but you know, that, that all takes time. This is not, fast art <laughs> it's slow making um i am trying to i i have been doing all of the quilting on my home sewing machine but as you can imagine it gets the larger the pieces get the harder it is to feed them through a regular sewing machine so i'm needing to connect with a long arm quilter which a long arm machine you have this huge kind of roller thing that you put your pieces on and then the machine itself is what you move to do the quilting and it's much faster and um, it'll be much easier. So I, I have a neighbor like two doors away that has a machine that she rents time on. So I need to call her and make arrangements to get some of these bigger quilts quilted because right now I'm just stockpiling quilt tops. 
Do you think you would ever consider getting one of those? Because I know my grandma has one of those because she's been quilting for a long time. And she says it's like a godsend. She loves it so much. Yeah, I know people that have them love them. I don't know. Um, you know, I could probably answer that question better after I've used one for a while. They can get incredibly expensive. Um, but, you know, maybe at some point would be, I've got the space here for one. It's just a matter of um, whether or not I would use it enough to make it worthwhile. But I'm anxious to get my hands on one. <laughs> um, so when when you were doing like clothing like all of that originally did you design the clothing or did you make any from that or was just that not your thing sorry i didn't get the beginning <laughs> it's... so did you like ever design any clothing pieces or did oh you make it yeah no so when i was in school you know we did I designed clothing pieces. That was a big part of getting my degree. Um, and then I still, you know, will occasionally do something for myself or for my kids. Um, but I never did it professionally or anything. Is the, yeah. is the material that like you buy to quilt, like is it kind of expensive to get that much of it? Like it seems like something that would be kind of pricey to get like a lot of. Yeah, I mean, it it does add up. I don't, my quilts aren't huge, so I don't use tons of fabric in a project, but like most nicer solid quilt fabric is like 10 or $12 a yard. Um, and I, like I said, I typically buy half yard cuts unless I need more. Sorry, my kids are just came inside and are being really rowdy. <laughs> they have the day off today. What colors would you say you're most drawn to when quilting? Um, I love, like I've got a piece laying here. I love like this, sh this shade of yellow. I go back to that all the time. Um, I love like tobacco browns or like kind of cinnamony browns, like this color. Um, I also love working in red and white. I keep going back to that. Um, I love that like kind of plus or red cross motif. Um, I've been doing a lot of with that kind of thing. Does it change per season? I don't know if it changes per season. Um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of have my my normal colors I go back to. It's It's weird. Like I have a quilt under the table here that I'll show you. And I'm debating finishing it because it's so not my normal palette that I don't know what to do with it. It's, uh -huh. it's just a top here. I mean, I will finish it, but like, this is not my normal color palette at all. Um, but I tend to go for like kind of more earthy muted colors. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, that when you pick that up and it was kind of sheer, because yeah. of the light coming from behind, but it also read almost a bit like it wasn't leather, but like fake leather, pleather. Oh, funny. Yeah. So has it always been, which just brought me on to what have you used? What variety of materials have you used? So I normally use 100% cottons, which is like what quilting purists use. Okay. But some of the quilters that I admire the most, um, there's one, her name is Jennifer Candon. You could look her up on Instagram. And she uses a lot of like old denim from jeans that she takes apart and decorating fabrics, upholstery fabrics, that kind of thing. Um, linens. I really like that. I just haven't experimented with it that much, but that's, that's on the horizon here at some point. I have, I actually just recently ordered like some printmaking supplies to play around with printing on fabric. Um, I think that would be fun, like do, to do prints on fabric and then cut it up and sew it back together. <laughs> All right, so you guys have prepped some magazine pages. Okay, so um, 
And then did Robbie show you, or I should say Mr. Austin, oh, sure. <laughs> did he show you the examples yes. that I did? Okay. Y'all speak. I'll shut up. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. You jump in too. It makes, makes this less intimidating. <laughs> um, so when I did these, I, most of them were kind of kicked off by a color. So like this one, I love this orangey color, but I wanted to add more texture to it. So I mixed like the print and the solid and then brought in other color. So like when you're doing these, um, it's probably easy, like the easiest jumping off point would be to start with a color that you love and then think about like what other colors might play nicely with that first color. So like a lot of times, I don't know how much you guys talk about the color wheel, but a lot of times I'll work in kind of like an analogous color scheme. So like the colors that live next to each other. And then I go across the color wheel to grab like an accent color. Um, so like blue lives across from orange, yellow lives across from purple, that kind of thing, red and green. So, yeah. <laughs> and pay attention to, to like the pattern that lives on the pieces that you've cut out. Like if you want there to be contrast, um, you'll want to make sure that you're putting like a large pattern next to a small pattern. If you want things to kind of blend together, then you could put patterns of the same scale next to each other, but that's just something to be aware of too. But you can't really get this wrong. Well, I am... Uh... I'm going to attempt to sign in on another device so that I can uh, go around the table and show you what they're working on. That'd be great. Okay. I have a question. How do you think we should go about like uh, cutting some of our uh, squares into like triangles like you did on yours? Like which ones do you think that uh, would look better like that? Like which patterns? Yeah, like, um, like, how do you think we should arrange the triangles to make them look better? Because I know you kind of, like, you're very unique in the way that you kind of put together the triangles and things like that. Right. You know, I, I honestly think it's just kind of like trial and error. Like, when I do this kind of thing, I lay, I generally lay it all out before I start gluing so that I can move pieces around and shift things around until it kind of clicks and you'll you just kind of have to follow your instincts and you know I generally with the triangles you know like like on this one for example you know I've used within this one color there are square pieces and triangle pieces and I thought about making like kind of a gradient across the page so like there's more orange here and then it fades out into the aqua color But like, here's another example where it's like, this side is more about purple. This side is more about yellow and they kind of fade into each other. But just play with it. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, but it's on her. Okay. Aha. Aha. Are you seeing a third, Julie? No, not yet. It just says iPhone and it's, but it's black. There we go. Now I see the floor in a purple chair. Okay. Oh, there's nothing going on. Here we go. Hey. Harley, say hi. 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 <laughs> and this is hey Holden. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Holden's got. Yeah. Yeah. So I gave them. 
I gave them each a print background, or they okay. a print background and then a solid. Right. Okay. And then we cut squares that they can triangulate if they desire. Okay. Which she has done. This is Sam. Hi. Hi. I was in the so. Yeah, Sam started working on it yesterday, thinking forget we were working on this today, but that just meant she was eager. <laughs> So eager, she's she's asking about the sewing machines. Nice. <laughs> All right, and this is Mr. Churchman, and he's got a broken hand, but he's gonna make it work. Okay. This is Alana. Hi. Hi. Do it again. Show your face. There we go. <laughs> okay. What are we working on? Do you Fun. have Fun. To black and white there? Yeah. I like it. Julie, do you happen to recognize that head right there? Is it Sinead O'Connor? Yeah, very good. <laughs> very good. I'm kind of a music buff, so. <laughs> yes, we've got, um, so, so, we've got a box. Of Saturday evening posts that nice use. and then this bag of old CD inserts. Oh, interesting! Nice. So that's where that's where this stuff came from. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was good. So yeah, this would be Saturday evening posts. Yep, nice. Yeah. All right, what we got? And then, wow, that looks like. Stevie Nicks. Oh yeah, it is. How do that is? There's a, there's three of them. Three of them. Girl. Oh, I see. I recognize. Is that a Counting Crows album? In yeah, there? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a nice uh, man. Man, haunting. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess this is what album was this from? I don't know. Gosh, I, I don't. No, I don't, I don't recognize that one. Couldn't really find anything. But I thought I'd just try and find some. Okay. Uh, we have an Alicia Keys here. You can't put them side by side, though. <laughs> That's not even collage. <laughs> okay. All right. And don't forget, you can cut triangles and stack them on top of your squares, too. Yeah. yeah are you going to get that? And uh, oh, here's another. Here's the same. Stevie Nicks thing. Oh, funny. Oh, and then it said Sinead O'Connor, but I didn't point that out to you. That was, you got that on your own. <laughs> so Stevie Nicks, the time, time space. Do you need that scissor? All right. I'm still too attached to my CDs. I don't listen to them anymore, but I don't think I could cut them up yet. It's still too precious about uh, that. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I fought it for a while. <laughs> um, but, uh, but now it's 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 it, it's been providing lots of uh I see I, I brought them in last year so it's it's been two years that we've used okay. them, uh, for projects and we've got uh, Janice Joplin who's this Carmen I don't know okay 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 so I like this uh, color what you got going on here. And you are you're still working the black and white. Are you gonna cut some I like I like the little bits of solids that are showing yeah. through too on those. Is that is that Adele space right here? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And actually, um Miss Liz, there's another teacher here who gave me a lot of those CD inserts. So this would be good. You want me to cut it? Oh, this for your squares? Yeah. Well, use these squares on it. I mean, use those squares. Okay. On this. I, I'm showing Julie as it. <laughs> I like I like having the little bird's eye view here. Use these squares. Okay. On that background. You just get rid of that. No, don't get rid of it. Oh, okay. move it here because okay. you okay. you're putting it aside. 
I got you. Now apply. Okay. <laughs> so what what are your kids up to right now? Um, I think they're watching TV. That was the surefire way to keep them out of my hair for the fall. Wow. <laughs> They go to Catholic school too. So they're they're encouraging me to get to work on their saint costumes coming up here for All Saints Day. So what saints are they going to be? Um, Sadie is going to be Mary Magdalene and Jack is going to be some Italian priest that I'd never heard of. Fantastic. So, so he had a he had a like um benedictine or francis i guess franciscan style robe that he wore last year so i was like you have to be something where you can wear that again <laughs> uh, alana has a question yeah uh where did you go to college i went to the university of nebraska for both of my degrees oh okay so we, they actually have a really great textiles program there believe it or not in the middle of nebraska <laughs> And that's where her daughter is planning on going to. <laughs> so, uh, is it on the prep Zoom call? Uh, are, I, I assume you've you've seen or are familiar with uh, the quilts of of Guy's Bend. Yep. Yeah, I got to. Um, I was working in at an art handling company in, in Houston a number of years ago, and it came through at the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. And so I got to like build crates for these things oh, and, wow. and then delivered one back to this woman in Alabama. Just it was and in her closet. She just had tons of them and just folded. Wow. It. it was such a, an interesting like we're building crates for these things and wearing white gloves and making sure. Right. That, and she's just got them thrown into into her closet. You know? Right. Yep. Yeah, those quilts are pretty spectacular. Well, that one that you showed me, that you showed that uh, you said this isn't my usual color palette, uh -huh. kind of reminded me of that as oh, well. Okay. As well as the woman you said to Candor, Candor Jennifer Can Jennifer Candon. Candon, I just looked her up too, yep. so I can see it. That's a lot of text there, dude. This is gonna be oh, image and text. Which I would think is backwards. Tell me how, because that one you're doing image on image, and text on. Yeah, I guess I could put this. You don't have text to. Text on the actual. Like, well, you could tell me why. Got kind of the yellow. With the yellow. You like those yellows? Hi. Right. This this is uh this is Holden. I didn't. Hey, hi. Holden. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is Hayden, and that's Holden over there. They're brothers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll get less contrast, like I said earlier, if you use like text on text or similar scale patterns and more contrast if you vary it. You like obliterating the background. But I'm gonna cut them You down. are? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Okay, good. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna mix with. Are you are you sure you wanna mix um Sinead O'Connor with um I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who she made, so whatever that is. Well, it's not her. All right. But like the color, like in the eye, you yeah. can see that partially. Also, like the okay, very good. I agree. So you say you've got uh, space for the um, the flat. Uh, the long arm machine. Yeah, yeah. Would that? Would, would, but I assume that would be downstairs. I see that you're upstairs there. No. So no. I'm in a big room, like above our garage, and I'm not going to show you because it's a mess. Oh. <laughs> but this, like the side of the room I'm on, is my my studio area, and then the far side is like my kids' playroom. Uh -huh. um, so at some point when the playroom gets cleared out, there would be room for a long arm machine, but it's not my domain quite yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can, you, it, 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 it's accessible just by regular doors? Like how big is no, this? It's, oh, so this room is open. I will just show you my messy okay. room. Thank so you, like, thanks. see, it's just a massive. Oh, okay. Room. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, and then, you know, this over here is the. Right. That area. So there's the door to get in. So it was, it was supposed to, we built this house and it was supposed to be two rooms. And when they got it framed in, we're like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing just being big and open. So we left yeah. it open. Yeah. So was there musical instruments on that other side of the room? There Did was, I my, my cello is over there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, pl I play cello in the college orchestra here. I'm not great, but I'm good enough that I can keep up with the orchestra. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of the epitome of this great uh, quilter uh, Midwestern cello. Like all of this is your, the, with the turtleneck. This is all beautiful. This is, you know, working for Betty and North. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I bet it's nice to look out there and see the snow at that on that evergreen that's so it, it is there's right now it's like very picturesque fall the leaves oh. are changing but that'll be coming so that's fun i know that's a good one and that yeah. looks like, i don't think is that prince in the corner it looks like prince it does but that's prince too so, sir can we do some like this can we do some like that Oh, I don't know that that's against the rule. <laughs> Kidding. Yes, yes. There are no rules. Exactly. Ooh, I like you. You. Going out with that. Thank you. That's right. Julie said there's no rules. And don't be afraid of making bad art. Like just go for it. Well, you did it right here. Why'd you ask me? Oh, yeah, dude, you can do it all. I was talking to your mom earlier today. She said you, that she, uh, she, she said you were having fun in this class, so I wanted to make something beautiful. I'll give this to her for Mother's Day. <laughs> it's in May. You got plenty of the Christmas. When's her birthday? Do a question for me, for her. Okay, go for it. Um, so, have you ever had like a quilt that you ended up not liking or having? Oh, sure. I mean, like some things are definitely less successful than others. Um, like I have, I've been making those little 12 inch square quilts and maybe I even took it down. Well, I'll show, I'll show you one that I think is really ugly. So you can see um, this piece of work that I don't like. So like this one, I was really not happy with how it turned out. So I haven't quilted it or finished it or anything. I just don't like the way the colors work together. I just don't like it. So. Some quilters will take the pieces that they don't like and cut them up and then recombine them in other ways and make really cool things. I think this one is, it's small and it's kind of beyond redemption, but it happens. Yeah, you done. Okay, Rene. So you got great minimal. Yeah, those are great pieces. And that texture. Up, Austin? Good. Oh. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So this Ooh, is what like, we got what five minutes left? Oh wait, 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 wait. You don't have to we can we'll continue this next class, but uh take a picture of, of the image so that you can replicate it because I don't think you're gonna have time to glue them for the bell and then just carefully place them back in your folder. Oh, whoa. That, those, that's great. That is a gift for your mom. All right, so what about this one? Julie, recognize it? Oh gosh, I can't quite make it out. I don't know that one. That's the back, the back cover of Tattoo You. Okay. The Rolling Stone. Okay. 
Right. I'm kind of like an 80s new wave person, so. Yeah, me, me, yes, yes. But you don't look, you don't have to tell me, you don't look 50. <laughs> I'm not, I'm in my early 40s. Okay. All right, photo it. So then 80s new wave. So does that come into play into your design? Um, I don't know that it comes into play with my designs. I mean, I listen to a lot of that kind of music when I'm working. I'm, I love Depeche Mode. I listen to them all the time. I listen to the Smiths a lot. Um, I don't know. Well, I think it has to. I think that's yeah. what you have to be aware of. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. I don't care. Just put it in any drawer. That, yeah, just pick a drawer. Start a drawer. That's a good drawer. That's a nice flat file. <laughs> Thank you. And this is Emily. Hi. <laughs> our dean of academics. I invite her in here all the time for these. Um, she doesn't get to make them often, but I guess you're quilting. My, my promo for you uh, spoke well. Yeah. <laughs> well, nice you could join us. Okay. Um, I have a picture of y'all around really on projection. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, so I'm going to shut this one down. You'll have to send me a copy of the photo. I'm going to send you the video. Yes. Oh, that's what you just said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Tell me when, because now I don't know what's going on. Of course. Well, I'll show you what's going on. OK. They don't, they don't want to be in the Here we go. You see, you're you're projected on the wall. Okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> all right, are y'all in? Like we get down. Yeah, it looks like we're all friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta like actually be friends. Right. Okay, one, two, three. Cute, cute. That's so cute. Cute. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I don't know. Go away. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you. Absolutely. There is so much that you talked about that I would like to continue talking with you outside of this. Uh, Great. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. And I'll send you everything that I have. Uh, and uh, and and actually, yeah, we'll have a surprise for you. Okay, thank you. Sean. Tell your kids I said hello again. Yeah, absolutely, I will. And thank you guys for having me. This was really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> nice meeting you. All right. All right. Take hey, care. You too. Bye, Julie. Bye. -bye.